Good morning or good day almost now. Um, thank you, Director Fawaz. Thank you for the CIS leadership for the invitation. So I have uh, labeled my talk rather than unexpected, unexpected or expected shock on the table. So maybe once I go through the case, uh, you will tell me that this was expected. So this is a 75-year-old woman with history of significant comorbid condition, including uh, known CAD, prior cabbage. The patient had recurrent GI bleeding while on antiplatelet monotherapy, and as a result, coming to the hospital, she was off any antiplatelet therapy and was not keen on taking any antiplatelet therapy. Presented with chest pain and shortness of breath, nothing uh, too exciting on the ECG, chest X-ray pulmonary congestion, uh, cardiac biomarkers including BNP and troponin were elevated. Um, her echo shows significant aortic stenosis. Um, this is her coronary angiogram. Um, I think that's one of the questions that is created that we have talked previously, what to do with uh, concomitant coronary artery disease and aortic stenosis. So as you see, she has uh, significant disease in the, uh, in the LAD beyond the Lima touchdown. What I'm pointing to is a CT angiogram. This is a right coronary graft. Um, I'll show you the angiogram in a little bit. But the, coronary, the vein graft to the right coronary artery has had uh, TME 1.2 flow with significant aneurysmal dilatation of entire, and you see how big the vein graft it is. Uh, so in the setting of her presentation with heart failure and um, non STEMI, and in the setting of a recurrent GI bleeding while on antiplate therapy, the questions that we had should be um, uh, proceed with PCI followed by um, TAVR, should we do TAVR followed by PCI, TAVR only, and should we need any hemodynamic support during any of those modalities. So these are her, um, um, these are the CT analysis of her, uh, her tower eligibility, good femoral axis uh, with calcification, but doable. Um, given her actually declining any antiplatelet therapy, or at least dual antiplatelet therapy, um, we decided to go with the strategy of uh, TAVR rather than uh, considering PCI at that time. This is a sequential uh, uh, aortoiliac, aortogram. Uh, for those of us who do a, a structural, this is a true flow balloon for which you do not need to do rapid pacing given her uh, given her significant concomitant coronary disease. This is a valve deployment, uh, no aortic insufficiency post-deployment. Uh, post uh, but unfortunately, post-deployment, uh, hemodynamic comp compromise with the blood pressure of 65 to 40, um, requiring significant vasoactive support. Um, anytime during an PAVR procedure, you have hemodynamic collapse, especially in the setting of concomitant coronary artery disease. Uh, number of protocol to go through. This is one uh, looking for um, acute ischemic process or heart block, um, making sure there is no aortic injury, and uh, using an aortic root aortogram to look for coronary obstruction, uh, PVL, echocardiogram looking for precardial uh, pre effusion, um, making sure there is no retroperitoneal bleed, of course, no acute uh, anaphylaxis. Going through those processes, uh, none of those was applicable to these patients. Of course, in addition to, in addition to vasoactive support, we discussed needing hemodynamic support and what should we do to resuscitate this patient while going through those processes. Um, this is from the same presentation from Seattle that um, should this patient get an ECMO as a bridge, or if there is any other percutaneous reason, such as coronary occlusion, then you need to support patient and treat that. Um, this is not a regular case. As you see, this patient had an impella. Now, it's put, uh, putting an impella through a transcatheter heart valve, very controversial. Um, and that's why I 
I search for the right emoji for you guys to, uh, to represent that uh, controversial uh, step. Um, we did take a picture of, this is, this is a picture of the, what is left from the left main I didn't show you before. And this is a picture of, uh, from the vein graft, um, significant aneurysmal with minimal distal, uh, distal filling of uh, right coronary artery system. This is a TE picture of, um, in, with the impella in place. Um, this patient actually had impella for about one hour in the cat lab um, and the, the hemodynamic got restored to normal in the cat lab with this continuation of the vasoactive support. And actually we did remove the impella in the cat lab after confirming that he would not need support, uh, she would not need support no longer by decreasing the impeller support. Um, this is another way of uh, what can lead to hemodynamic compromise during shock. Um, I showed you the, in the slide, could be uh, paravalvular leak, could be tamponade, could be perforation, uh, conduction abnormality. In this patient, most likely, uh, almost certainly, was global myocardial ischemia following rapid pacing in a patient with incomplete coronary vascularization because of her coronary anatomy. Um, this is the pre-discharge echocardiogram. Um, this is uh, both good and bad about the role of impella for hemodynamic support in patients with aortic stenosis. On the left, you see a um, commentary and review point from one of uh, our mentors, both for me and Dr. Zaydan, Dr. Neil and his um, his colleagues, and on the right you see a case uh, that a patient came with prior transcatheter heart valve and TAVR and had cardiogenic shock and ended up having an impella and the impella did not uh, function as, as it should or as you would want it to. Thank you.